In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end, that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name.
Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the service of angels and men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that, as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Hallelujah. They have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives even unto death. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. 
Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come. But woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands and two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes and be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that, I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear friends in Christ. Do we really have guardian angels? Did God assign to us an angel or legions of angels to us when we were conceived in our mother's womb? Well, that sounds like the thing of fairy tales and fantasies. Perhaps things in children's books or pictures that hang on walls or figurines that sit on desktops or on shelves. However, the gospel reading here in verse 11 proclaims something that we should heed. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. You see, that, that word there is possession. And there, T-H-I-R, means that angels belong to the children. And we dare not forget about Psalm 91 either. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. A prophecy of Jesus there in temptation in the wilderness, but yet also indicative of how God raises up angels to protect you as well. The text gives us evidence that guardian angels are real. It is correct to say that when we sleep, angels are guarding us from the wiles of the devil. That when we die, we are, our souls are carried to the bosom of Abraham, just as is indicative in that parable of the rich man and Lazarus. There is protection from angels. It is ours now and throughout our life. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a fantasy. It's actually the truth. Now this day that we have before us is called St. Michael and All Angels Day. St. Michael is that archangel, and we heard him mentioned in not only Daniel, but also that Revelation text. Back in the very, very early days of the Christian church, whenever Christianity finally became legalized in the land under Constantine, the people of God were able to build structures to worship, to worship in. And here, in these structures, oftentimes they were named after St. Michael the Archangel. They were named after St. Michael the Archangel because of the protection that Michael would afford to God's children. And for sure that was true. Not only in Daniel and Revelation, but also the much needed protection of the people who still had people out against the Christians who were on the war path against them in the very, very early days of the church. Now we see evidence of God's care through angels both in body and soul in the scriptures time and time again. And with seeing that evidence, we marvel. We marvel at these, elus these elusive and mysterious creatures and their care that they give to us. You see, these angels are created heavenly beings, made by God to be put into service and to worship God. The angels have no flesh and blood, as we have but are instead spirits. Now, they have appeared in human form back in the Old Testament, but that was to give evidence of their very being before those that God would minister to, the ones through whom God would send a message to. So let's take a closer look in the Word of God and marvel at how God's providence and care through angels took place, and then also see that care for you and me in our day today. First of all, we go back to the book of Genesis. We marvel that the, late, that the angels led Lot out of Sodom when fire from heaven 
was to be put upon that city and consume it. This happens daily for us too. For when in this world we have many degraded things in us as sinful people are redeemed, are, we are rescued in this, from this spiritual Sodom that we call this world that is all around us. We know that we have not at times lived up to what God expects us to do. And we live in a world that has fallen. But yet somehow, and for some reason, God's mercy is poured out upon us, and he does so through angels. You see, we also marvel that the Lord sent an angel to show Hagar a fountain in the midst of the desert where her and her child could have drink because they were thirsty and starving. Yet this occur in, in the midst of our daily lives as well. For often when we are weak, when we are powerless, when we need God to show us the way or to give us the strength that we need for our day, here he sends it through his angels to comfort us. Not so much unlike Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying to his heavenly Father and comforted by an angel there. We marvel that angels appeared to Jacob in the form of an army when he was away from his house and fleeing away from his brother Esau. Yet, the angels of our Lord daily encamp around us and those who fear him, as it says in Psalm 34. We marvel that a man with a drawn sword appeared before Joshua in the Old Testament book that bears his name and says to Joshua, As commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. To this day, angels fight. They fight for this world, for, for us, and as a spiritual army, for the sake of Christians and the church, especially in these most crucial times in our world. We marvel at how an angel helped Elijah and brought him food and drink in a jar. We marvel whenever an angel shut the mouth of that lion when Daniel was in the lion's den. We marvel whenever we hear about how an angel came and helped Peter when he was imprisoned in the book of Acts. Angels are no stranger to the game of protecting those that God loves. And this includes you, dear brothers and sisters. Angels are active messengers and protectors of God's people. They are real. They are not figurines to put on a shelf or just a picture that is cute or a part of books that may be more fantasy than real. So, if they are real, what is our attitude towards angels? What shall it be? They are put into service by God for us. We should recognize the great love that God has for us through them and how they love and live to serve us. We should recognize that God serves us through these celestial beings so that we may have what we probably don't even realize, God's protection and love when it means the most to us. In this world where we put on polluted garments because of our sins, we have God's protection, a, a wonderful God-created army from heaven. How beautiful is the things that God created, both in heaven and on earth. We look around the earth and we see the trees and the stars and the grass and the foliage, and we know that God's hand brought those before us, that we might see them and enjoy them. But a much greater kindness and mercy comes from God, who sends angels to minister to his people, like you and me. For this, we should thank and praise him. You know... This begs the issue that whenever we are faced with angels, we, we know that we do not worship them. No, we don't worship the instruments by which God sends to help us. They are like God's hands. If you have a neighbor that's helping you, we don't thank his hands. We thank our neighbor. When God protects us by his angels... We thank God alone. We worship Him alone, not the angels. 
And so Christians know of angels and what they do, but what do we do in light of knowing how angels love and protect us and serve God? Well, we can do two things. We can mimic their behavior. And we can mimic their behavior in two ways, in word and in deed. First, the word. Back in the day of Martin Luther, he had a pastor. His name was Johannes Bugenhagen. And Bugenhagen would call Luther a strange thing. He often called him an angel of the Lord. This doesn't mean that Luther was a celestial being, of course not. It doesn't mean that he was even a a good and righteous man above all others in and of himself. Of course he wasn't. But no, Luther had the word of God on his lips and he had it in his pen. And so, whenever we talk about an angel in that way, we mean to know of an angel as a messenger. Luther was a messenger of God. Angels are messengers from God. And so are we. We are to remind this world that God is in charge. Yes, in charge of our days, in charge of our nights, even in charge of of COVID, can you believe it? Our testimony of what we believe can come from our lips or strokes of a pen on paper or keystrokes on a computer. Yes, you too are to act like angels, to be angels, messengers of the Lord. We bear witness to Jesus in our words and in our life. What leads us to the second way that we can mimic angels? By deed. We are angel imitators to our neighbor through our good deeds, which flow out of love. Angels express their worship to God by serving those that God had given them to serve. That is you and me. Being a servant of God means that we are ourselves servant of men. This means we always are looking out for our neighbor. Now remember back in the book of Genesis, whenever God asked Cain, where is your brother Abel? And Cain responds, I don't know, big fat lie. Am I my brother's keeper? And the answer that God would share with Cain is yes, in fact you are. You have been given to help and to preserve and to keep each other, to love one another, to serve each other's needs. For you are to love your neighbor as yourself. And so this is how we keep each other and act as angels act in our words and even in our deeds. We marvel at the angels. They are elusive and mysterious. But ultimately, we marvel at the love of Jesus. We marvel at a a God that created such celestial beings in order to help you. We marvel at a God who loves you so much that he would create the myriad of angels in heaven in order to protect and preserve you. We marvel at a God whose protection of of you and me means that we are his most precious gifts and his prized children. We marvel at God who gives us the forgiveness of sins through his words and says to even you, poor miserable sinner, you are loved, you are forgiven. We marvel at God because he has made angels to guard those in the scriptures and us today. Yes, guardian angels are real. I don't know if you have one or a thousand of them, but let's not lose sight of who the true guardian of our lives really is. It's Jesus. He preserves and protects you through his blood, his life-giving means that lifts you up into his very bosom and says, you are mine. I love you. And in me you have eternal life. He guards and keeps you in the faith. He guards you from the devil and death. He guards you by wrapping you in his love and his forgiveness poured out to you on the cross. 
do you really have guardian angels? Yes. Do you have Jesus who loves you and always will? Absolutely. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. our prayers for this week, remember especially all those who are sick or recovering or receiving treatment, Ron Schock, Paul Schutbach, Laverne Ludy, Liz Kimball, Linda Reinert, Bradley Hagler, Warren Stulak, Craig and Karen Kalman, Blake Fowler, Rebecca Belt, Susan Kim and Elwood Trotter, for Joyce White, Bob Stewart, also for Jean Kraft and Brian Moore, for Karen Smith, Lisa Reck, all these regarding their health concerns. We also pray for David Richardson, who is in hospice care. For Greg Goodson, Janelle Hopkins, House and Hal Sinclair, who are all recovering. We give a petition of thanksgiving for Mary Orvis, um, who is, uh, whose cancer is now in remission. Uh, Mary is a sister of Jim Moore. We also give a petition of thanksgiving at the birth of a daughter to Samantha and Patrick Phillips. Uh, we pray for Shirley Manlove, who is hospitalized, and we continue our prayers for our country during this uh, current epidemic. Dear beloved, let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. O oh God, our Father, fill us with your Spirit, that we might put away all pride, humble ourselves, Turn and become like little children before you. Give us hearts to trust and depend on you for all our needs. O God, our Father, bless all pastors in Christ. They would preach the pure gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to seek and to save the lost. Grant them protection that would go before them and power with your power for salvation to all who hear and believe. Bless the faithful of our parish family, that they would love and care for one another, bear one another's burdens, and generously support your ministry here and abroad. O God, our Father, we know that Satan and his demons long to assail your children. As we wait for the day of the Lord's return, keep us steadfast in the faith and shield us with your word of truth, that we would withstand all their assaults. You sent your holy angels to comfort your son in Gethsemane, and you send them to your children to guard us in all our ways. We thank you for this precious comfort, and we ask that you would continue to send them for our defense, comfort, and joy. O God, our Father, you have placed authorities over us for our peace and safety. Remember our president, legislatures, judges, and all those who make and administer and judge our laws. Grant them wisdom and a desire to seek your will. Guard all who serve in our emergency services and in the armed forces. O God, our Father, remember in mercy all those who call upon you in their need. Especially we pray for those who have requested our prayers, including Ron, Paul, Laverne, Liz, Linda, Bradley, Brian, Warren, Craig, Heron, Blake, 
Rebecca, Susan, Elwood, Joyce, Bob, Jean, Karen, Lisa, David, Greg, Janelle, Hal, Shirley, and all who suffer during this epidemic. Let your holy angels be with them, that the wicked foe may have no power over them. We give you thanks for Mary, whose cancer is now in remission. We also praise you for the birth of a daughter to Philip and Samantha. Preserve this child even unto the waters of holy baptism. O oh God, our Father, we give you thanks for all who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in holy communion with them, that our ears would be joined with theirs in listening to the heavenly choir of angels sing your praises on the last day. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all from we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his counts upon you and give you peace.